Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our 2022 Complete Beginner's Guide to Tales of Magile with our Dwarven Bulwark here in the Iron Council. And if you can look at our quests, I pushed J to bring up the quest log. And we have two completed quests, and an open quest called Into the Darkness, which is a wide open quest. And it's telling us to go explore new places. And it's giving us a pointer of locations that we can go visit and attempt to solve the mysteries and level up. But I want to just call to your attention that some of these are incredibly difficult. Like, it's listed on this quest, but this is a quest that is leading you up all the way until trying to moving into the mid and end game. So, you know, Daikara, you shouldn't even be uh, sniffing that place at this level. And you'll see how that unfolds, but I want to do this guide most specifically because I think that this is a difficult turning point in the game once you know they open up the world to you and the rails kind of come off and it can be difficult to navigate and understand exactly what you should do the first thing I want to do is always just open up my inventory and take a gander at what I've got and just identify some gaps so for example I don't have a belt and I don't have a ring okay and so you know uh, I want items in those slots if I can you can think about am I super happy with my weapon maybe now I don't have a lot of gold but I do have a lot of things I could sell so we could go down here for example to the gem shop and just you know sell a few things all right so I'm gonna click on gems for example and just just kind of sell all of these And I'm just trying to make a little bit of cash for the moment. Um, and I could sell this pretty nicely. Um, anything else I want to sell? Yeah, I want to sell this because we got a better amulet. And we do have some other infusions. I don't need this. Um, eh, I might want to keep that. So let's look at these two regeneration infusions I have. I have one that heals 169 over five turns and one that does 145. Uh, but this one has a bit of a shorter cooldown. Most of the time I don't care about the cooldown on a regeneration infusion because it's like I need to heal right now. And whatever happens in, you know, 15 turns is something else. Um, it, it's not like it's not a factor, but the, the thing that I'm looking for personally with this is the heal. So I'm going to sell the lesser of them. Um, I'm going to keep my iron pickaxe. And um, before I make a final decision on my boots, uh, I do have this rough leather boots that are better than the iron boots and then I have an iron shield which is better than this one equipped and I could probably get rid of this as well now we can go in here and see some infusions but we can also bebop around and just see if there's anything at any of these shops that we might care about lanterns no and the reason no is because uh, we have this um, actually, you know what? How, how much are the lanterns? Never mind, I lied about that. Is there a good lantern? Yeah, these are all very expensive. So some items you're just not going to be able to get right now because you don't have a lot of gold. Now, you'll get more gold later. But here we go. Here's some belts. I'm just trying to get some low-hanging fruit, especially something to fill in the slots that I have nothing in. So this belt will give us 20 more encumbrance some resistances and help with fatigue um which is okay this belt is good for mana but that's not a resource that we care about so this might be worth it 
it could also just be us kind of throwing money away, which is, you know, quite possible, but uh, isn't the end of the world. Here's the Mace Smith. All right, I'm going to buy that belt and move on. I'm fine with this. And you'll see it'll let us carry some more so we can be better treasure hunters, I guess. We'll wield it. Give us a little resistance. And that's good enough. I could sell more stuff and get some extra cash, but um, now you see my encumbrance is up to 149. I, I'm not really struggling too much. Although I guess selling some of these heavier items would be smart, so fine. Let me sell this. I am going to sell this magical sword. I don't. I'm not going to use it. Sell that, um, and then now we're good. All right. So we've got our encumbrance down to 45, and that's just from our worn equipment primarily. And we're ready to go. So you need to find the staircase out, um, where it says uh, exit to the world map, and we're going to go out. And when we get out to the world map, you'll see. First of all, uh, we're on a different type of screen. The music changes, and we have zoomed out from, you know, being inside the town out into this larger map screen. It says in Teal, you stride into this area without a second thought while stifling a yawn. You feel your time might be better spent elsewhere. Now, that's the game giving you a uh, reflection of your character's power level, and basing it off of your level basically and saying this area is easy for you so you don't care this is not a great place to grind and get experience but that's where the trick is we're playing in permadeath at least I am and so what you want to do is just kind of hoover up as much experience as you can and so low level areas are just fine for completing some quests getting some treasure making some money and getting experience to be strong enough to do some of these later dungeons. Um, so that's a good thing. Now, when we walk around here, if I push tab, you can see I can open up the giant world map, but it's pretty small, right? And um, I'm going to just sort of move around. And sometimes you can cross a, a river or a body of water, and other times you can't. And we're going to go down these rice fields and or wheat fields i guess and boom here we do look we found something okay so whenever you see a new area that you can go into that you've never been in before it will have these like sparklies on it so you'll see that this castle has these sparklies okay um and i'm going to just push shift direction keys and this is the town of last hope Right over there. Now when I mouse over it, it'll also say minimum level 15, maximum level 35. And that can be used as a rough gauge to tell you whether or not you should be going in there. Now it's a friendly area, so it's not. We're not going to get attacked on site going in. But it is just nice to know, like, hey, maybe I should be visiting that when I'm a bit stronger. Um, but let's take a look at this. And... Here's the Golem Graveyard, which is a dungeon that you will get sent to uh, via a quest. And it's too hard for us right now. Minimum level 14. All right, we are level 7. And you can tell it's too hard for us, by the way, by, you know, the fact that the minimum level is in orange. Meaning, like, not impossible, but very difficult. Red would mean, like, terrifying threat. Um, and now we have found a half-dead lumberjack, and he says, um, please, you must help. It is slaughtering everybody in my village. Please, he points his finger at the nearby forest. And so you're getting a quest right here, and you can just say, I will go there and see what I can do. At least that's what I'm going to say. And we get the quest called The Beast Within. If I push J, you'll see it's up here. You met a half-mad lumberjack fleeing a small village, rambling about an untold horror lurking in there, slaughtering people. Okay. So he's telling me about a place where I can go for a quest. And I'm going to just keep going around exploring. Now, most of the time, when you're on the overworld map like this, you won't get into an encounter 
Um, it's not like, you know, Final Fantasy or something where you just step onto a tile and then you're in a battle. Like, you'll see whatever enemies are on the map, for the most part, that want to attack you. They'll be moving around independently, and you can examine whether or not they're hostile. Uh, pro tip, don't fight anything that you see on the overall map until you're stronger. Um, I made that mistake and uh, in the past a few times before, and they can wreck you. Now we see something up here, and what is this? This is the, um, no, that's not the Golden Graveyard. Is it? That can't be right. You're telling me there's two Golden Graveyards? Oh, oh, I locked the tooltip. That's what I did. Whoops, okay. Anyway, this is the small Lumberjack Village. So this is where the quest is. By the way, I push Shift-L. And you can lock a tooltip in place so you can like constantly be reading it if you want, which is why the golem graveyard was locked in place. Now, we could go there and do his quest, but it does say minimum level 8, and especially in permadeath, I tend to heed all of those warnings. Like, I'm not trying to sail in there underprepared. We'll look for some lower hanging fruit. And so let's just go around and explore. By the way, you can still just push Z to explore here as well, if you like. Uh, it's perhaps a little bit more dangerous, but it'll get you around real quick. Now, look at what we've done. We found the entrance to the scintillating caves, and we found a town called Elvala. This is my pro tip for this part of the game for all new players. Once you have started and played with some other character types you will see that each character gets their own starting area for the most part and starter quest and um, then you will break free into the world map in some capacity like we've just done with the bulwark the pro tip is go to every other character's starting area and do their do as much of their content as you can for experience. You might not know what it is at this point in the game, and I'm not going to spoil it, but if you see something that's level range 1 to 7, know that that's like a beginner type area, and you can go in there and just flex your muscles and get experience and get treasure. I think it's a great way to power up so that you're strong enough to do things um, for Into the Darkness, like, for example, the Old Forest, you know, uh, it'll help you power up for that and we could go do the beast within once we get a little bit stronger so that is the way that I recommend going to get your character stronger so that you don't die early and that's something you should probably just do in all of Tales of Agile is just go around look for any side quests any quest that might be beneath your station do everything to prepare so that you're not wandering in and trying to do something under level because that's just like the quickest way to die Okay, so um, here's my character, and I can step down here, and I will also see uh, the Ray Lauren camp. Okay, so I'm getting access to all kinds of good stuff. First, let's just go into the town, and we found another town. Now, towns are guarded by all manner of... Uh, beast and human and you know racial hero whatever it is these are ogre rune spinners okay and they are not hostile to you uh, unless you cause mischief in the town or attack them and I don't really recommend that now I'm going to go into the city here uh, the easiest way to get in is to go right through here and you can kind of just do what I did before, just walk into people, see if anybody has a nice quest for you as you go around and chart out what's here. Okay, there's a an essence shop, there's a, a cloak shop where we could get like uh, some other belts or cloaks, fun stuff like that, leather armor, um, there's some uh, weapons, we found a artifact weapon here cores fall just on sale in the shop unfortunately we're not going to really be using staves but 
Um, this is an area for us, a magical type person to begin. Oh, and I will make a note. I have been getting some posts about this uh, on YouTube and some kind people have explained this as well, but just in case, I want to make it clear that I have the transmogrification chest in my inventory, but I did, I obtained this by beating a certain boss character that's a very early level boss with, um, that'll just be part of your opening story quest with one of the types of characters that you can be. And once you unlock the transmog chest, it is unlocked for all of your characters and you get it from the start. This game works like that um, in many ways. There are just unlocks that you get. So try to do every quest, talk to every person, and you'll just uncover all kinds of things that you had no idea would be important that will unlock a new character for you to play um, or even, you know, a new gameplay element like that. Uh, I, I, as I apologized in the first episode of the guide, I was not able to completely reset all of my achievements. So um, I began with the chest, but if you start out, if you've never played before, you will not start with that chest, but you get it very, very early on, um, eventually. And truth be told, all it does is just sell, sell stuff for you, like, easily right up front, but you could just sandbag everything and come to the town and sell it, and it would be doing the same function, it's just selling it for you faster. So you're not having a gameplay, uh, the gameplay's not broken for you, or too fundamentally different unless you can't you have a bad encumbrance but alright I'm going to walk around here and there is a uh, this is a place you can come and actually buy um, lore chronicles and these are expensive but if you want to learn the story of the game this is a great place to come and just you know once you, you have a bunch of money buy those up and read the story honestly I'm struggling with cash now, but later you'll just be, you'll have plenty of money, you know, um, once you start selling stuff, so don't worry about it at the moment. Now, most towns will have a door like this that has no sign, and if you go into it, um, it will be uh, an alchemist in training who is somebody who's trying to become an alchemist, and they will give you a quest and they will give you a choice of what kind of potion you want them to make you if you succeed for their quest by bringing them ingredients and helping them try to you know, pass the alchemy challenge and become alchemists. And so just read what they say, okay? Um, I'm an adventurer, go on, and he needs to make an elixir to be in the Brotherhood of Alchemists, and he needs ingredients, and so he wants me to go get them. Um, and you can just say, I accept, and he'll give us... Um, half of an elixir of invulnerability um okay and so i say i accept right and then he also says um which elixir do you want mysticism savior or mastery okay and you pick kind of what quest reward you want from this by looking at the options and figuring like okay which type of character am i which one do i want so this Elixir of Mysticism in the bottom right, you'll see the tooltip that explains what it does, and this permanently increases your magic and willpower by three. We're not magic or willpower based characters, so that's not interesting. Savior gives us saving throws, all saving throws by four, interesting, and mastery um, gives you four additional stat points. And to be honest, that's what I'm going to take. Um, stat points sounds great to me, so that's what I pick, and I say I'll be off. So then when I go to my journal, you'll see that I have this like Brotherhood of Alchemist quest. And this quest will start to build up because, spoiler alert, there are more people who are trying to become alchemists in different towns. And you can get them the ingredients and make a choice on which one you want to help based on what ingredients you have and what reward you want. And it'll all add to this quest. So once we've received the alchemist quest, and again, no spoilers, but... That is not a quest that you will be completing anytime soon, so don't worry about it too much. Just every once in a while, go back in and, and check in on it. Um, we do have an orc heart, so we have one of the ingredients that are needed for Marcus of Elvala. But I need two more, an ice ant stinger and a vial of greater demon bile. 
So those are things uh, to look out for. And once you collect those, the game will automatically record that you have that ingredient. And by the way, it's not even something that you hold in your inventory. It's a quest item, okay? Um, so it it's just an item that you have, but you don't even keep it where it says quest or related items. So don't look through your inventory on it. Just push J, go to the Brotherhood of Alchemist quest, and then you'll say, it'll just say, hey, you have the needed ore cart, and you've got it, and you're good. All right, so we're going to leave, and now it's time to have some fun. Now, I guess this, you know, your mileage may vary on this, but I do enjoy this. So we're going to go into the scintillating caves and just blow them apart. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world, but it should be okay for us. And this will be a great opportunity for us to... Uh, you know, maybe get level 8 or 9. Definitely level 8. So, uh, and just continue to learn how to use our character. See what abilities we like. I'm gonna charge into that guy, blow him up. And see, you know, what gives us trouble so we can know what choices to make in the future for how to make us stronger. And also just try to find treasures so that we can get some money and maybe check out the shops and uh, buy some things that are going to be improvements for us. Now, a couple of things I want to say. The shops carry um, a random inventory. So uh, every time you know you go in there, oh, we got a ring. See, just like that. Now, unfortunately, I don't think it's a good ring, but it's, it's a ring. Um, yeah, it doesn't do anything. But we got something. So the shops are going to be different for you than than mine um, and they're different each time uh, so you don't know if you're going to get something good but if you do you want money for it you want to be ready for it and this is how you make that money all right now we got some lore here about what was going on here you're going to learn about the spell blaze the Cher toll um, and the Shay Lauren but again um, I'm not going to uh, read the lore I do that actually in my let's play of this game I read everything uh, and, and discuss the story but I want to keep this spoiler free now we're getting blasted so let's just take a moment and talk about the enemies here I'm kind of actually moving through them pretty quickly without really analyzing all of them uh, because it's a luxury of the fact that we are overpowered for this area that being said don't fall asleep behind the wheel. You can still die very easily and lose everything. Um, if there's a unique enemy or you know a, a more challenging foe or just something happens and you're not keeping track of things, you can still die. So don't think there's no threat. Um, but for right now, these are red crystals, okay? And they blast us from far away. We can inspect them and just see what they're all about. And their talent is Flame Bolt. So they shoot this and... It does fire damage to us, and then you can see it applies this dot to us, this burning, all right? So we're on fire, which, you know, generally not what you're going for. But the nice thing is we regenerate significantly. Now, I think it's worth paying attention to the fact that this character can't do a lot about this. Um, some characters can have more interaction with projectiles, but um, the game does move at such a pace that you will see it pause with a projectile in midair and you know here comes the the firebolt at us if we were a, a ranged character with some very fast reflexes we could shoot this out of the sky we don't have that um, but we can block it right so when I see the projectile in the air what I did was I used my block ability which is instantaneous so it means I use it okay um, and it takes a turn uh, the travel speeds instantaneous rather it it does take a turn but it goes off before that fireball hits us. And then you can see that it hit us, right? But we blocked all of the damage, thus giving us um, the Counter-Strike buff on that guy. Now, we couldn't arrive at him fast enough to use it, but it's still cool, right? I'm just going to kill him. And we're fighting some snakes and stuff, which I'm just generally not worried about. And then let's just go ahead and rest up and keep looking around. And there is something, a giant rabbit to the north. That's so funny. Yeah, these crystal guys will just kind of pop in um, off of the crystals sometimes. So 
they can sneak up on you and surprise you. We've got a nice amulet to sell. You see, here he goes. He just warped right in there. Um, but that's okay. We just kill him, and now we're, like, really, really close to leveling up. And you can see this is not hard. You know, our bulwark is just, like, roar. I'm not even necessarily using abilities a lot of the time. I'm playing sub-optimally, uh, but I'm having fun. And just... Uh, there are certain games that don't let you do this, where the game scales with you, uh, or it's just so difficult that you never get to feel this. But one of the things I do enjoy about Tales of Magile is this point where you've played through your character starter stuff, and you've you've got yourself to a, a baseline, you're feeling good, and then you can just go back and dominate these areas, and you just feel like you've made a lot of progress. But it's also not completely fruitless. I mean, look, I just leveled up again. All right, so we got to level eight, and we got stats, class, and generic points. So this is this is just fantastic. I'm gonna keep going up for strength and um, constitution. And now we've gotten ourselves into a position where we can get um, these kind of tier three abilities from these techniques that we have here so i could get shield slam shield expertise perfect strike or spell shield for example and so let's take a look at the shield slam is a activated ability that costs 14.6 stamina and it hits our target with the shield three times and then quickly returns us to a blocking position um the bonus block will not check or trigger block cooldown, okay? So, um, what's great about something like Shield Slam is that um, you're going to start out not doing much, but you can build it up to do more, but three attacks for 66% damage is a lot of damage, okay? So that's good. So that's very, um, that's something to consider, and then you can see how once we put another point into this, it jumps up to 80%, 92%, right? Um, and so you start to almost get to be doing three attacks in one, uh, which is very powerful. Shield Expertise is a passive ability and increases your damage with shield-based skills and increases your spell and physical saves. So increasing your damage with shield-based skills, like, oh, I don't know, um, shield pummel, shield slam, and giving us increased resistance for spell and saves is fantastic. So this is something to really, really spend at least one point on so that you can, your repulsion will go up. Um, all of the stuff that we want to do with our shield will be increased. Perfect Strike is an activated ability which um, gives, a, it's uh, basically says going to focus on the target and you get an accuracy bonus and you're you can attack creatures you can't see without penalty for the next several turns um so this is something where you can use this to make sure that you hit like if it's a very evasive enemy you can pop this and that plus 46 accuracy is just going to mean that you hit every time so this could be good when you start to get into a point in the game when you're fighting enemies that are hard to hit now we have the withering orbs um, so that we can see invisible stuff, so we don't really need this too badly right now, but it's definitely something to consider. Then there's spell shield, and um, this allows us to be more resistant to some spell effects. Honestly, I think this is actually very good for us because spells can just blast you for a ton of damage in this game. I mean, like hit you and go through your armor and it, they're certainly a weak point for your character so, so this is useful for sure so again looking at these abilities from tier 3 I'm going to take shield slam just because it's another ability that I can use immediately that will do some extra damage for us and then I'll probably take something like shield expertise uh, and, and move into some of these other uh, techniques later then we're going to go into generic points and what do we want to get stone skin um, is a passive ability which basically just gives you a 15 percent chance to have your skin turn to stone and improve your armor by six 
Um, and this uh, scales up really, really dramatically. Um, so what this means is you have a 15% chance to increase your armor by 6 for 5 turns and fully ignore the attack triggering it. So what that means is you have a 15% chance to just take no damage from an incoming attack, which is ridiculous, right? So, you know, the attack that, that comes in, we don't take any damage, and then our armor goes up. So that's very good. We already improved um, our heavy armor training up, and I don't think that we need to boost this again at the moment because we can aware we can wear the massive plate armor. I think that's comfortable enough. Like, we could get an extra 8% armor hardiness, an extra 2 armor value, and, you know, reduce the chance of incoming crits, but it's diminishing returns. Now we could also get Thick Skin, which just gives us 4% flat resistance to all incoming damage, which is tremendous. And we could boost our accuracy so we don't miss... We could also get Unflinching Resolve. I mean, there's just a lot of good things here, but I'm going to go ahead and take Stone Skin just because I think uh, a 15% activation chance is very, very good for that effect. So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to take Shield Slam, and we're going to uh, accept the changes. Now I'm going to move um, this ability over here and I'm going to move shield slam up here on my action bar a little bit and we're going to continue just running around in these caverns and uh, let's see just kill what we find and just you know charge over here and there's a, this guy we say hi and there's a oh there's an actual ring that we might be able to wear alright so let's look in here so again, we have an empty ring slot, and this is just going to give us some saving throws. So it's not great, but it's better than zero, and we'll take it. And we're going to run around, and... Alright, we're going to go down. We're at Caves 1. Let's go to Caves 2. Do I want to keep any of this stuff? Let's ask that question. This is a two-handed sword. No thanks. Linen... Um, this is no good. No, I don't. I'm just going to turn it into cash. Cash for gold. And we're going to run around. And there's a guy up here, so that's fine. We'll just go fight these worms. What ifs? Worms. Schmerms. And we're going to walk over here. Blast that guy. Go down here. Got it. And all right, that guy shot us, which is annoying. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see. All right. Health is full. Okay. We're just kind of charging around. I'm not even using abilities uh, at the moment just to make my passage a little easier. Now, you see what I was able to do there? This projectile was coming at me, the giant crystal rat strike, and I just stepped out of the way of it to avoid it. So, sometimes you can do a little bit of maneuvering. Uh, I am going to just use shield slam on this guy. And you can see it says we hit it for 9, 8, 9, 8, 9, 8. Um together because we do an extra bonus of mind damage um, I'm not going to read the lore because uh, we've got um, this withering orb so we have extra mind damage from our withering orb which is just terrific so uh, we also get extra damage from our sword but I don't know why that would add to the shield slam but I'll take all the extra damage I can get. Okay, I'm just going to charge in here. And again, um, you'll see our stone skin just triggered right there. 
So, uh, we, re we hardened our skin and we repelled the attack, meaning we took no damage and then we have a little bit of extra armor class because of it. So it's already working for us. It's already doing its magic. And I'm just going to step down, avoid the fireball. And here's a bear. And we got it. Uh, we found a mine star, which is uh, a kind of weapon that you use if you're uh, a psionic. Oh, and this is a special guy. So this dude, Zubithra, the rare monster, you can tell by the circle around the bottom of it, this is something special, it's something a little extra. So I'm going to charge in. And um, looks like it summoned a golem. So this must be an alchemist uh, of some kind, and that's fine. So what we need to do is just immediately start using our abilities. So I'm going to um, Resilience of the Dwarves, and I'm going to use Block. And uh, I'm going to use uh, Shield Slam, and we're going to go up here with it. I'm going to just put everything I can into uh, the rare monster. It's at half health. We have a Counter Strike on it, so I'm going to Shield Block right there, and we killed it. And now we're just fighting the golem. Which, fine. I'm just going to keep hitting it. It's not really hurting us. We got it. And we got a blazed um, lace. Which is a magical digging mattock. And we got the other part of the research journal. Again, this lore you would find if you had chosen this character to type to start out with um, and I'm not going to uh, read the lore uh, beyond what I already have but on my let's play all of that lore is read out loud by me um, let's see what do we want I don't really want this Iron Humble Constitution. Is this better than my hat? My hat is Iron Humble Constitution, which gives three armor and three constitution. This gives... It is the same thing. So I'm just going to let that all perish. I did not want the special digging instrument because I'm using my healing thing. Oh, okay. Let's just jump back here and around the corner. And let's just kind of wait. For, what is that? It was a wisp. All right, I'm just going to stand here and just wait for these things to come in. And, oh, okay, we'll step out of the way of the shot. And I'm just going to charge that and kill it. Okay. Here they come. Just going to fight whatever they have for me. No problem. Again, this is a very easy section for us, which allows us to kind of just fight uh, pretty freely, although we just got annihilated right there by uh, the blast from that multi-hued crystal. So, again, gotta be careful. And there's the boss. Orange circle, spell blaze crystal, boss. Let's step out of the way of the shot. Let's not get hit. And I'm just gonna wait right here. That shot is pathing toward us, which is a shame. And I'm going to move out of the way and see if the, these things will come at us. Hmm. I wish there was a better way for me to get there. I'm going to creep around the back and see if I can just fight the guy who's down below first. I don't want to take them both on. It's annoying. Okay, he looks like he's gone. All right, so now I'm going to use... Resilience of the Dwarves, and I'm going to charge into this boss. I'm going to block, and um, I'm going to Shield Slam. And now it's got the uh, Counter Strike, so I'm going to... Um, actually, I did Shield Pummel. I'm going to Shield Slam right now. And uh, we hit it for 100 total damage, which seems pretty good. And uh, we are taking some damage. Let me hit it again, see where we're at hit it again um, and we killed it we leveled up so we got level 9 and we got a magical hat called the cloud caller 
cloud collar if i remember correctly is hilarious um a, it makes a storm cloud follow you and deals 15 lightning damage to all enemies in a radius of three each turn so it's bad for armor but it's great for doing damage so i think i'm going to actually just equip this because it's ridiculously hilarious um and do I want any of this other stuff? Corrosive Iron Gauntlets of Strength. What are my gauntlets right now? They're just regular. So, so these give us plus two strength and six acid damage. Yeah, I think that's a good improvement. This battle axe must be wielded with both hands, so I'm less interested in it. Um, it's a 162. I mean, I'll just... Um, no, that's fine. And we'll get the last piece of lore here. And we're done with this cave. Oh, you know what I should do is I should level up. Oh, this guy's trying to be mean. And I don't like it. Okay, let's level up. By the way, we're like halfway to level 10. And again, that's what's awesome about coming back to these kind of areas is just getting a whole bunch of rather easy experience to make your character stronger. I'm going to go one, two, and one again and i'm going to take shield expertise to improve my damage with shield based skills so that um i get better resistances and all of my shield abilities just do more damage i'm probably only going to take one point in that for now but that's really good now it's time to think um i'm going to take a point in unflinching resolve uh, to let us recover from a stun effect. It's not that glamorous, but when you need that, it's extremely important. And it's going to become more important as more enemies want to do debuffs and things to us. So we got the last bit of the lore. And let's just go fight all of these guys, have some fun. Okay. <laughs> you can also use this hat to just call lightning, uh, which is hilarious. Like, I'm going to shoot that guy with lightning just because. It's a pretty short cooldown, too. It's a fascinating thing to add to your arsenal. And um, I'm going to disintegrate all of that. Oh, let me go up and then go up. And then there's nothing left to explore. Oh, right. Go up. Go up. And boom, just like that, we have explored the scintillating caves. And uh, we're 60% to level 10. So we got two levels in there. We got this lightning hat. We got a bunch of good stuff. We got money. And that's what you want to do at this phase. Just walk around the world map. Look around and see if there's easy places for you to go and take care of business. Go to the towns. Talk to people. Get quests. So, you know, we have, for example, this Into the Darkness quest. The Old Forest is southeast of a town called Dearth. So why not just walk around the map? Oh, look what we just found. This is the uh, Mysterious Hole in the Beach, a.k.a. Uh, this is indeed the Sandworm Lair, right? And the Sandworm Lair, if I just push L, Shift, Direction Keys, minimum level 7, max level 16. Try to be closer to that max level when you go into places, <laughs> is some advice. This dude right here, you can look at him. Um, this novice mage, uh, you should talk to him. If you find yourself in this area, and well, you will. And look, what do we find? I'm going to say this is Dearth, and here's the ruins of Corpol, and here is the passageway to the Trollmire. If you don't yet have your transmog chest, 
Um, all you have to do with what with your character is go into the Trollmire and finish this, and you should get it. Um, now, what are we looking for? Let's walk around here. And let's just keep looking. And this is a group of guys on the field now. These are Zergrounth Patrol, and they're okay with us. They are not hostile to us, but if you are a magic user, these dudes will want to hunt you and kill you. So you have to be careful if you use magic or if you ally yourselves with anyone magical. Those guys will want to fight you, and they are uh, quite strong. So just be careful of them. Even if you are magic, you can just avoid them, uh, but just make a note of that. Now, here we go. We found it. This is the old forest, okay? So this would be the first place that they suggest that we go for Into the Darkness. And you can go in there now if you want. We're level 9, almost 10. It's it's not unthinkable. But what I would recommend is do every place like this. The Ruins of Corpul, you know, the Trollmire. Anything that's 1 to 7, crush those, get the experience, and then move on. All right, everybody, I think this is a great place to stop this episode of the tutorial. This is a um, allied kingdom patrol. They're friendly with us. They won't fight us. They're just out there keeping things safe. I hope you found this useful. I think this is enough information to get you started in this game, to get you going so that you know what you do once you get past those first couple of easy quests to go out onto the open world map and start to look for... Uh, the lower level areas to clear out to get experience and then to start going into the towns talk to people get quests explore and then see what areas you want to go into by following the into the darkness quest or just looking at the level range of the zone and making a determination what i like to do is just go in and see how hard the enemies are if i feel like i'm you know well within that upper echelon of that level range like if i'm close to the max level i'll feel comfortable going in uh, and see how hard it, if the enemies are just killing me, I'm out and I'll go someplace else. So explore, get stronger, make money, do quests, and you are on your way to having a great time in Tales of Magile. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Take care.